it's so good to, to be with you today. We've had much adversity uh, coming to you. Some 50 hours uh, to get to this place today. Uh, Satan, our enemy, did not want us here. That's why we're excited for what God has to say to us. For my English speaking friends, you will be given the benefit of any funny thing that I would say. You can laugh in advance of my brothers that will, it will be straightened out by my translator. English and Sahik and Alkar is a thing. We are so that English and English and Joko are important. Our city will be part of the Pinata or the city of the other family. I promise if one eye is closed, I will keep the other one on God's word. One eye is, one eye is closed due to sleep. <laughs> I will keep the other one on God's word. Amen. Our uh, sessions, our time together will be focused on biblical counsel. We would ask that during this time, if you want to take uh, notes um, for questions at a later time, please do so. I would like to get a little background as to what, how, what brings us here today. Um, I have been uh, married for 26 years. I have a 21 year old son and an 18 year old daughter. I have been pastoring for 16 years. And I've been a biblical counselor for that same amount of time. I have a, a great burden for God's people to be counseled by God's word. My heart is greatly burdened that the world would counsel God's people. So we're excited to prepare you to take God's word in many counseling situations. For the sake of time, I'd like to just uh, jump into why this is so important today. In my preparation to become a pastor and also to become a biblical counselor, uh, just as you have been tasked to read uh, many books along with the most important one, God's Word, I was challenged to read a book. It's called Why Christians Can't Trust Psychology. This, this book uh, presented to us as ministers of God's Word. The man would stand before the pulpit and preach God's Word with authority. With great conviction. And then people would show up to his office on Monday after the service. Many times people come to see us after we have preached God's word.
I've already wore out one translator. So the, a, a particular woman shows up to the pastor's office on Monday. She was uh, very sad and very anxious. But she was hopeful because of what the pastor had said on Sunday. So the pastor proceeds to listen to her problem. You see, he had just preached that God's word was enough. That God's word was sufficient. But when he came to the woman's problem, he had no answers. Sadly, he sends the, the lady away to the world for their counsel. What the dear minister didn't realize was he contradicted what he preached from the pulpit. Because God's word is enough. God's word will show us the way. Every pastor that sends their folks to the world for counsel those people will receive no answers. You see, every problem that we have in this life has a spiritual component. And our Creator God gives us answers through His revealed will. So during our time together, we're going to look at problems, whether it be interpersonal problems, marriage problems, parent and child problems from God's Word. But we will also look at uh, a subject that we all dread to hear is depression. When we think about, do we really believe God's word is sufficient? Do we believe that? The question I'm going to present to you this morning is, what in our council lies outside of God's word? Our belief from God's word is that we are two parts. We are physical creatures. And 
And we are also spiritual, emotional, and psychological creatures. And I want you to know that I believe God's Word teaches us that everything outside of that physical being is handled from Scripture. And I'm thankful today that even in the physical creature that God's word when spiritual man is dealt with can even heal the physical body. Think of one example with uh, King David. We see depression that was deep uh, with King David. He felt it in his very bones, in his physical body. But as things were set right with his God, when spiritual man was focused on God, physical man was healed as well. So let's ask God's word about these matters today. The world will believe um, that man is either basically good or as Plato, the philosopher, would present that the physical body is evil and the spiritual man is good. But God's word says in Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10 the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? I the Lord search the heart and test the mind to give every man according to his ways according to the fruit of his deeds. Today I want us to understand God's word presents that every more man is born evil and apart from God. Man's mind is corrupt. So as we ask God's word, is man basically good? We understand man is not basically good. We counsel from this understanding. We also counsel from the understanding of the book of Genesis. Where God created man and called it very good. And then seeing man in a, in a fallen state, we counsel from that place. But here's the question, what is the biblical heart? If we understand the biblical heart in a, in a, in a biblical way, then we can stand from the pulpit and preach God's word is enough. And we can counsel our brothers and sisters in Christ in deep despair. I would like for you to write these three things down. The biblical heart is three things. 
It's the cognitive part of the heart. There's the first part is our beliefs, our interpretations of information. That's the first part of our heart. The second part of our heart is the volitional or doing part of the heart. This involves our commitments and our choices. And I must confess, this last part of our heart, uh, Americans, uh, people from our country, get all wrong. They think this third part of the heart is the heart itself. It's the affective or feeling part of the heart. This encompasses our desires and okay. yes, our feelings. Yeah. Let's also look at the heart much like a tree. The Bible talks about us being like a tree planted beside the waters. And the waters of God's word that makes us grow. So if we were to think of the tree being man's heart. The cognitive part of the heart would be the roots. The doing part of the heart would be the trunk. And the feelings part of the heart would be the leaves. How many people that we shepherd today are led by feelings and emotions? But if we look to God's word, we can say this. What we truly believe will affect what we do. And if we obey God's word, it will affect how we feel. So as I give you a foundation for some of the things we'll be teaching about, I want you to remember the tree. I want you to understand what God's word talks about the mind. He is also talking about the heart. Let me give you this as well. Write these three things down as well. When we are counseling others from God's word. So we are tracking these three areas. The presentation issues. Things, things that are easily seen. Such as anger. Fear. Anxiety. These are the things they come to you with. And as we begin to hear their heart, our attention should be drawn to the things that they do. The things that they are thinking. These are the performance issues. But also those roots. We're going to call this the preconditioning. These are the things that guide those thought processes. The things that they believe about God. 
The things that they believe about themselves. And the things that they believe about others. Everything filters through those preconditioning uh, mindsets. So you have the great honor of recalibrating the mind through God's word. Is they see God as all powerful. All knowing. Sovereign in control. Then they can willingly follow his commands. With repentant actions. I'm going to be brief with this this morning. Um, there are some worldly philosophies that have infiltrated the church. We think of Freudian philosophy. This philosophy tells us that it's not our problem. It's somebody else's fault. And it causes us to be victims. In our country, many people uh, are now on medications for the rest of their lives because it's not their problem. And they sit down with a doctor um, monthly for the rest of their lives. But God's word says it is our problem. That we are responsible. And that we must submit to God. There's another philosopher, a uh, uh, psychologist called uh, Skinner. Don't fall into his methods of counsel. Skinner would just correct behaviors. Thought of man is just a more intellectual animal. But God doesn't call us to just correct behaviors. We don't want religion. God has called us to a relationship. As we give Him our hearts, as we surrender our lives, then we will willfully follow Jesus. Ephesians 4, 22-24 says this. Put off your old self, which belongs to your formal, your formal manner of life, which is corrupt through deceitful desires. In verse 23 it says, And be renewed in the spirit of your minds. There's that understanding that the mind and the heart are the same thing. And as he renews our minds, we put on the new self. Created after the likeness of God. 
one another. If you're a Christian, you're a counselor. If you're a pastor, you're a counselor. If you're a woman of God, you are a counselor. So when we think about God's word being sufficient and giving us opportunity to serve him this way, we will be coming from the standpoint in these next two days. The second Peter 1 3 gives me my command. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life. Through the knowledge of him who has called us to his own glory and excellence. By which he has granted to us precious, his precious and very great promises. So that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped from the corruption that is the world because of sinful desires. So as we enter into other sessions today, whether ladies by yourselves and us men in here today, you are a counselor. God's word is enough. And we're going to learn to look at the biblical heart the way God's word commands us to. I'd like to pray over our time together in our sessions. And I'd ask to you right now that God would open your heart the way we just described it. That you would know what thus says the Lord. That he would give you a desire to obey his word. And that he would give you a joy the Lord that would replace those emotions, those feelings that sometimes drive us astray. As I pray, will you pray for yourself, not looking at anybody else, pray for your own heart. Let us bow our heads. God, we thank you, God, that you have brought us to this time together. God, we thank you, God, for Trivandrum Bible College. To the, for the dear uh, pastors and wives that are here to gain from your word. For the students who are preparing themselves even now to prepare to go out to build your church. Allow your word to be clear to my heart today. Allow your word to transform the way that I think, God, about you. About your kingdom. And about the problems that will face us in your church. Let us not mix the world's philosophy with your word. But today, transform God your people, God, that we may be effective tools. 